Well, our cheaters are heading to India. Uh, no, not the Free State Rugby team, but the actual Big Cats. The Environmental Affairs Department is spending 12, or they're sending 12 of the fastest land animals to India as part of a cooperation agreement between the two countries to reintroduce the species. Now, just last year, India received eight cheetahs from Namibia, which were released at the Guno National Park. As it plans to send a similar number annually over the next eight to ten years to help re-establish a viable population. Now, chasing the cheetahs is... This is ENCA reporter Heidi Jockers, who joins us now for more on this update. Uh, Heidi, good morning to you. Uh, talk to us about the trip uh, that these cheetahs will be embarking on all the way to India. Yes, exactly. So we do know that 12 cheetahs will be heading to uh, India today. Probably a very uh, long and stressful trip for the cheetahs, but uh, it's all part of a uh, project to get these cheetahs uh, integrated uh, into India. But I think let's get the experts on this. Um, we are actually on the other side where uh, the cheetahs are. Um, we're going to try and see if we can actually show you further up is where they are now preparing um, uh, preparing to get the cheetahs into the different crates. Um, but let's just get perspective. I think... Um about this whole process and why this is actually happening. Many would say, why would you take cheetahs out of Africa and into India? Yes, well, uh, cheetahs are historically occurring species in India. Um, uh, they went extinct in 1948 there, and this is part of restoration efforts. If you truly want to rewild the landscape, you have to bring all the historically occurring species back. Yeah. Uh, so cheetahs occupied an ecological niche there, which is now vac vacant, and we have to refill that niche to truly restore the landscape. So tell us about this process uh, and how it's going to unfold today. It's obviously a very stressful process. You're going to have to dart 12 of these cheetahs and uh, it's it's going to be quite stressful for you and for them yes absolutely these are wild-born cheetahs you know they don't like being in confined spaces so this is going to be an extremely stressful event for them uh, we know from previous relocations that we lose about uh, you know one in every 12 cheetahs that we relocate so there's a very real chance that we'll lose one of the animals today but we do have the support of the Indian Air Force uh, helicopters and uh, uh, cargo aircraft that will get us to our destination as quickly as mm -hmm. possible so out of the 12, the likelihood of you losing uh, a cheetah is just one, one of them out of the 12? Yes, one out of 12. Uh, in our previous relocations to Malawi, we relocated five to Luwonde National Park, we lost one. Uh, we relocated five to Majeti Wildlife Reserve, we lost one. Uh, so, so it's a very real, realistic situation, you know, that we may lose an animal. These are wild-born cheetahs. But, uh, you know, we have the best vets on the job here today and, and hopefully it goes smoothly. Mm. It's, it's going to be quite a long flight. I mean, you're going to be going from here in Limpopo to Aratambo Airport. That's a trip in itself and then the flights. Um, just the preparation in uh, the cheetahs to the airport and onto the flight. So for, first of all, we had to get them into quarantine. Uh, we had to vaccinate them uh, to ensure that we don't bring our diseases across to India. Uh, and then, you know, once you get them uh, immobilized and, and loaded into the crates, it's quite a straightforward process. Mm -hmm. Cheetah, are, you know, after you've immobilized them, after that first 30 minutes of, of, of post-darting, then they transport quite easily. We can move them over a three-day period to India if need be. The real danger time is now when the darts go in and, and, and overheating and stress and running into Boma fences and that kind of thing. So uh, the drive to Oatambo and the flight to India is, is a relatively straightforward process and then we'll be uh, collecting the 12 cheetahs with Air Force helicopters and relocating them to the release site. Wow, quite a process. Um, I just want to ask you, how are you going to get in there? Because, I mean, I'm standing here and I'm already petrified. So how are you going to get in there to dart them? So we, uh, these cheetahs, uh, you know, they uh, are relatively used to uh, human beings. They've been here now for for. Th for about uh, uh, three months now, so so we'll get a vehicle into the into the Boma area, and then uh, we'll immobilise from a distance of about uh, uh, 30 metres, and uh, and then the cheetahs will will go to sleep, and then we'll load them into the crates. Mm. I just want to ask one last que a question, Vincent, around the questions of why we are sending our cheetahs to India, and whether or not they are going to survive that environment and that climate. It's a very di it's a very different country. It's a different continent. Um, and people watching might be saying, but why, why would you, you know, send your South African cheetahs there? I mean, aren't we short of cheetahs? Maybe just give us a quick perspective of that. 
No, no. In South Africa, we have a growing population. We have too many wild cheetahs. So our population is expanding by about 50, 60 individuals per year. If we don't find destination reserves for these cheetahs, then we have to contracept or euthanize. And that will be a very sad day for cheetah conservation because we're in a position now where we can supply other African countries and Asian countries with our surplus cheetah. So, so, so we have this growing population. We need to put these cats somewhere. Uh, the only thing is, of course, we're taking the wrong subspecies species to India. Uh, our cheetah are not the most closely related subspecies to the Asiatic cheetah. But we are also the only country that has a growing population. So we're the only people that has the logistical capacity to resupply India. Wow. Okay. So we're breaking the genetic rules, but we are only th with the only realistic suppliers. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, we'll obviously be here to see that whole process. I'm wondering if we can spot any. I don't think we can at this stage. Um, one in the corner. Over apparently there. there's one in the corner. I don't know. Just Let's just see if we can quickly show you. Um, just mind the shaky visuals. Oh, it's all the way there at the back. Um, I'm not sure if we're right going to be able to <laughs> see it, but uh, we'll definitely obviously get more visuals later on uh, when they are darted. And that's it for now. That's one of? Twelve cheetahs. Twelve. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but the, the, the rest are coming from KwaZulu-Natal, aren't they? Nine from Limpopo, where we are today, and three from KwaZulu-Natal. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so I think that one there is uh, sitting. How many are male and female? We've got uh, seven males and five females and they come from five different reserves. So we really have mixed the, the genetics so that we don't have inbreeding problems when we get to India. Okay, fantastic. Thanks so much for your time. And let's just leave you with that shot. Um, just chilling under the, ch under the tree there. <laughs> Know what's Heidi, I can definitely hear the discomfort in your laugh. I mean, it almost feels like the cheetahs are so close to you, but uh, definitely see them chilling, uh, are waiting to head over to their trip to India. And uh, we wish them a safe uh, trip, I suppose. Uh, those cheetahs expected, of course, to be shipped. Twelve in total uh, expected to be shipped out in India. Thank you to my colleague, Heidi Jockers. Uh, what a spot by a camera person as well to find a cheetah. Uh, and as Timza says, all the best for their trip and the experts going with them.